When you were LDS, there was a lot of emphasis put on having a testimony. And that's a language that when you get into the, the uh, traditional Christian world, maybe uses that language a little bit differently. So we want to compare and contrast the idea of a testimony. And hopefully we want to do it in a way that encourages you to kind of know how to think about your own relationship with God a little bit. And um, so let's talk about testimony and let's talk about just the nature of testimony, like when we were LDS versus what you've discovered since. So for me, the testimony that I had was a testimony of certain things, certain principles that mm -hmm. I had gained a knowledge that they were true. Okay. And I hung my hat on knowing that these principles were true. And for me now, my testimony is it's not about those principles, even though those things are good. And yes, God steers me towards these things that I held dear. There's still things we need to know. It may be different things, right, right, than it was before, but there's still things we need to know, right? Right. But it's like more being than in that. the Word of God yeah. is mm -hmm. absolutely something yeah. that God wants us to do. But my testimony is no longer in reading in the Word of God every day. Right. My testimony is where is God as I'm reading in the Word every day? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's more about, it's less about the principles or the precepts, and it's more about a person. Yes. Okay, how about you, how about you Jason? Yeah, same thing for me. Um, so for me, the, the testimony was just a lot of things I needed to know. There was a lot of noise. Um, and for me, they were more of a distraction. And I would never have known this until I know it. Right, and after the fact. After right? the fact, it's like... All these things were distracting against a very real and close encounter with the God of the universe that no idea was there, okay. awaiting there. Right, because because you're so focused on being able to affirm the right things. Yeah, yeah. Right, that there's that just kind of cluttered up your awareness that there's really more to it than that. There's right. this person who longs to be known by us, right, and so he's inviting us into relationship with him. Yeah. And so when we talk about testimony in the Christian world, in the traditional sense, we're more talking about our stories. There's not just one, but our stories of how we've encountered and how we've come to know this person, this God who loves us, right? Right. So uh, let's talk about then where does this come from? Because in when we're LDS, there's a lot of thought, a lot of discussion given to gaining a testimony. Yeah. You know, they teach... You know, they teach certain ways that you gain a testimony. Um, and so let's comp contrast that a little bit with kind of how do you, quote, gain a testimony, I guess you could say, in the Christian world. What's yeah. the source of that? Um, for me, the source was uh, surrender. I mean, it, the source before was more of a me-fabricated thing. It's really yeah. kind of working hard to get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a, lot, a little bit of pressure to yeah, and, and some of it was just repetition and saying the thing until it became something I felt. Yeah. Um, but surrendering and letting God be God, letting God, um, almost like taking down my walls and letting God uh -huh. come in, mm -hmm. you know, for me, that was the big thing, um, getting rid of the noise and allowing him in. Yeah, you know? okay. So, yeah, the, getting the distractions. Mm -hmm. and uh, It's interesting what you said about it being kind of a me thing. Because mm -hmm. I, I look at that, at the LDS testimony, there's a lot of factors that build that. There's, you know, my desire to be known to have one sure. by everybody. There's sure. the whole culture. There's family prompting me, you know, to, to have a testimony. So all right. these factors that, that build it up mm -hmm. and, and kind of make it happen. Um, where, whereas now I think it's more about just like getting to know Jesus, right? right. And seeing what he's doing in my life. Right. Yeah, and I think that's the same thing. The, the word gain a testimony is so finite to me. Oh, that's a great you know? point. Yeah, yeah, as soon as you gain a testimony, then you should have it always. Right. So once you gain It's so a, static, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. And I think now it's... And you know, even before I knew that, you know, in my head, and you know, every time I taught about testimony, I always taught it as building blocks. You know, they build on top of each other. Your testimony builds. And now it's just, it's a journey. So it's never ending. As long as I'm walking with God, He's always teaching me. Mm -hmm. And I'm always practicing trusting Him yeah. through living these principles that He's teaching me. Right. So it's not finite. 
I am still in testimony. Right. I am still right. in my story with God. It's not right. something you gain. It's something you live. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And it's not one and done. <clears throat> right. Because I think at that point, you know, as Jason has has alluded to, that then we can put it on ourselves. Yeah. I know this. I've got and this. And it has no right. longer, there's no longer a relationship with God in walking with him mm -hmm. through that principle. Yeah, yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. I think of... You know, for a biblical paradigm for this, I think of the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. who encountered Jesus, a very incredible living encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, and it changed his life. It changed his way he thought about, that, about Jesus and God. It also changed his sense of mission. It's his own sense of identity. All these things came out of that living encounter mm -hmm. that we, you know, with Jesus. And so I, that's what we're talking about, right? Not necessarily a big vision on the road. We're talking about... Right. Uh, getting to know this person and letting yeah. him speak into our life and letting him work and act in our life. Yeah, and then expressing the story of this interaction with <laughs> right. God. I mean, that's the testimony of, right. hey, here's where he's come in. And, um, you know, for me, I've, I've told the, the probably overused term of, hey, this is where God came in and made beauty out of ashes. Yeah. Where I was at the end of me and he had to come in. And, yeah. And now, darn it, I've had to tell this, had to tell this story, you know, right. so many times of him coming in. Yeah. And usually that involves me at my worst. Right. And him being that an awesome guy. what he does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, so it's not just the experience then, it's also then the telling of that experience yeah. so yeah. other people can benefit from it. And so what's the takeaway, you know, as, as our viewers think about testimony past and present or future, you know, what would you be your encouragement to them today? So for me, it's just a, a realization that it's not emptying all of those things that we had a testimony of before and then feeling a void of feeling empty, but just knowing that that's a great space for us to have to let God in. Okay. Let God fill that space and trust yeah. Him that He'll teach us and that we can walk in step with Him on that journey. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, I hope this has been an encouragement to you today. I don't see how it can be. As you think about this God who loves you, who wants to encounter you and wants to intersect your life, and uh, you're going to have stories to tell about how God has done that as you learn to surrender to him and seek him. And so uh, please take a look at the article below and at the discussion questions that go with this uh, discussion, this conversation today, and use those to help you uh, grapple with this important topic more. But thanks for watching today.